Are you testing these in any kind of indications? Other way, I mean, it gets messy because then you get into the FDA and stuff. But well, you, we we yeah. are, we are, we, are. we yeah. are doing it because at the end of the day, like the proof is in the pudding. Like mm. like you you've got to prove that that all these elements do add up the way that we say they add up uh, to lead to benefits. So if if I say putting more stem cells in circulation. If I say stem cells can become everything and putting more stem cells in circulation means they migrate in tissues where you need repair and they can accomplish repair, well, let's test it. Are these plants going to release stem cells and lead to tissue repair? So we will never be able to use these studies to say stem regen helps to heal from heart attacks or Parkinson or any of these, but we can publish the data and basically say, yes, releasing your stem cells with plant extracts or any other means, releasing your stem cells can lead to tissue repair. So we have a number of these studies that are now either under underway or in preparation. So two that are underway right now, one is on congestive heart failure, the other one is on Parkinson. So the one on congestive heart failure, both of them are ongoing right now. So we don't have final results, but we have results on people that have completed the protocol. So mm -hmm. on the heart study right now, we have 10 patients that have taken this blend of plant extract that triggers the release of stem cells from the bone marrow. And by doing this three times a day over six months, people with chronic stable congestive heart failure after six months, 10 out of 10 have normal heart function. I was not expecting to get 10 out of 10. So mm -hmm. as we get more patients, maybe that statistics will go down, but it doesn't matter. Even if at the end of the day, it's 80%, it's darn good. So, mm -hmm. so right now, so we have good data showing that yes, releasing your own stem cells can have an effect on the ability of the heart to repair. We have started a study on Parkinson. So the, the, the participant take the product for six months. Right now, all that we have is four patients that have gone through three months. But after three months on these four patients, very small, so we cannot really reach conclusions. But the data so far is encouraging. On four patients after three months, we have 50% reduction in motor symptoms of Parkinson. We have 36% reduction on depression, which is another hallmark of Parkinson, using the Beck scale for measuring depression. And we have 56% improvement of quality of life uh, using the SF36 questionnaire. So the study is ongoing, but so far the results are encouraging. And we are preparing a study on COPD, liver disease, uh, spinal cord injury, stroke, uh, and potentially diabetes. So, so we're growing here the number of studies that we're doing simply to be able to say at the end of the day, putting more stem cells in circulation indeed increases your body's innate ability to repair and that will touch your heart, your brain, your, your, your liver, your, your, your lung. Uh, and here are the, the evidence to show that. That's really the line of thought that we're developing. Right. Yes. Yeah. A little, it is a bit of a diversion, but I saw in the book that there were some tests that you did with uh, like putting um, stem cells from a male into a female. And and then you could see that the, the, the stem cells from the male appeared in various different locations in the female. So um, it, it's showing that, yeah, the, the repair from the stem cells is going everywhere, like in all the tissues. Correct. Correct. This is, this is, to me, is the most fundamental discovery in the field of stem cells. Nobody talks about it. It's one of those fundamental things that is, is, is a daily thing that happens every day in your body, but it has not been recognized, I think, for what it is. And it's what you just described. When scientists do a study to monitor or document tissue repair, they need to mark the stem cell to be able to follow them later. If a stem cell becomes a heart cell, you need a way to tell that heart cell was a stem cell the day before. Otherwise, you can't document the phenomenon. That's why it was not seen. That's why it's so recent in our, in our scientific history. Uh, it's because before we didn't have a means of observing these stem cells. We didn't know it existed. So we didn't have the motivation to go and look mm -hmm. for it. So all of this was discovered when scientists started to irradiate female mice, inject male stem cells, let's say for a treatment for leukemia, uh, and then they start to discover that you have cells with the Y chromosome all throughout the body. 
So now people start to use this method to document tissue repair. So we'll do the same protocol, male stem cells into female mice, and then they trigger a heart attack or, or a, an injury to a muscle or to the liver, the liver disease. And then you see that the amount of, of cells in the liver, if we, if we take as an example liver disease, the number of, stem, of liver cells, not stem cells, liver cells in the repaired liver that have the Y chromosome, showing that they all came from stem cells. So, uh, so then scientists ask the question, well, is that true also in humans? So the only way that you can see that in humans is to go and look at tissue biopsies taken at the time of an autopsy in a woman that died 5, 10, 15 years after bone marrow transplant from a male compatible donor, meaning on the day of that bone marrow transplant, that woman now all of her bone marrow was made of stem cells that had the Y chromosome. So if that process exists in the body, meaning that stem cells are going everywhere, even in the absence of an injury, then you should find cells in the heart, in the liver, in the brain, in the lung, everywhere in the body with the Y chromosome. And depending on the time of, of survival after this bone marrow transplant, the picture became obvious. Every organ and tissue in the body goes through a process of turnover. So if, I, if we extrapolate the data that exists, and it's not a lot of data, so these numbers are not hard numbers, but if we extrapolate, we have a new liver every two, three years, a new pancreas four to six years, new muscle every nine years, a new heart, half of a new heart every 25 years. So everything is in turnover. But if at age 30, you have lost 90% of your bone marrow, your red marrow, and it keeps going down, and this is reflected in a 90% or more decline in the number of stem cells in circulation. There's a point in your 30s where you don't have enough stem cells in circulation to offset this turnover that is taking place on your tissue. From that point on, you start to accumulate a deficit in your ability to repair. So small micro damage or unrepaired cellular loss starts to accumulate. And if your medical history, your genetics, past injuries, lifestyle, whatever, makes your liver be the weak spot, it's liver disease in 20 years from now. If it's your pancreas, you're a diabetic in 10 years. If it's your brain, you're a Parkinson patient because you you did not have enough stem cells to repair. So I published this in 2013, saying that stem cell decline is the underlying cause of disease formation, degenerative disease formation. And so I suggested there's a way to test for this. Let's go and count the number of stem cells in the bloodstream of people who have developed those kinds of diseases, and let's compare that with healthy people of the same age. And right now, there's about 50 of those studies that have been published. And you take people with COPD, lung disease, liver failure, kidney failure, heart disease, cardiovascular disease, atherosclerosis, high blood pressure, uh, lupus, uh, erectile dysfunction, uh, Alzheimer's, Parkinson, uh, arthritis, the list keeps growing. People with those disease all have on average 50% or less than the number of stem cells that you find in a healthy person of the same age. So the number of stem cells in your bloodstream tells what will be your health as you age. So that's why I was saying earlier on, if we can count how good of a mobilizer you are by counting how many stem cells you have right now in your bloodstream, we can pretty much predict, given your overall medical history, we can predict what's the problem that you will, or if you will develop a problem as you age.